Hola, me gustaría introduciros al maestro Krishna Adani. Él es el principal instructor para, para todo el mundo de, del sistema Burro Suprema. Y queríamos hacerle algunas preguntas. Krishna, ¿qué uh, piensas de las main features de Burro Suprema? Um, okay, well, you know, it's a well-rounded system, so we cover, as you can see on the, the logo, uh, different things like uh, projectiles, flexible weapons, uh, double-handed weapons like a staff, um, or double stick, spada daga, knife, single stick, uh, and empty hands. And uh, we have a lot of principles that we use such as the characteristics of the weapon principle. So when we teach, we always look at the, what is the characteristic of the weapon. Is it an edge weapon, a non-edge weapon? And based on that, uh, that's how we teach the techniques suitable for that weapon. Mm -hmm. um, also, we look at the nature of the environment principle. So how will your style uh, or movement patterns uh, work the best based on the environment? You, know, you have to adapt it depending on if you're in a slippery terrain, if you're in a close confined environment or if you have an open space. So we use different uh, techniques and uh, training methods from the system based on these principles. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the knife, what do you think uh, is the, the basics of the training for the knife? Yeah. Uh, with a knife, we, we start off with uh, reading body language. So we have a lot of positions where if somebody's standing, uh, if you can recognize the, the position, then you can have an idea where he's likely to be concealing the, the knife. Uh, you know, we have different ones here, uh, like this, and so on. So what we do is we teach the students, first of all, to recognize this so that they can go in and stop the attacker from actually getting the knife into a dangerous attacking position. Mm -hmm. So we work a lot of trapping, a lot of controlling from, from these positions. Um, if we are unable to do that, then uh, you know, we, we look at other strategies, different ways of blocking and parrying the knife. We put a big emphasis on balance, you know, making sure that when you apply your movements that you are manipulating uh, the opponent's balance so that it's not easy for him to counter. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we teach obviously uh, striking, but against the knife, you know, it's very important that when you strike, you are maintaining positive control of the weapon. Um, it's very easy, you know, to start striking and then the guy starts to cut your limbs as you're striking. So we, we have specific uh, tactics to teach you how to control the knife, then strike. Uh, and then obviously we teach uh, disarming tactics, um, how to use the, the, the knife uh, against the opponent while he's holding the knife. Uh, different kind of gripping techniques so that it's difficult for the opponent to change hands uh, and so on. Um, and then of course, you know, we do a lot of self-defense scenarios of hold-ups. If for some reason, uh, you know, the opponent gets very close and is, puts a knife in your back in the side, uh, in the front, how you can deal with that. But we try to teach the students a lot of awareness training so that, you know, ideally they don't leave themselves open to this kind of situation. But it's more of a plan B mm -hmm. type of idea. We, you know, we also advocate that if possible, try not to tackle the guy with a knife with empty hands. If you can use projectiles, so, you know, most of the students training with us, they will carry some kind of pens, pencils, something they can use as a projectile to make it easier to go and close the range. Okay. Um, to start training with a knife, what do you think is the best way? Uh, knife against empty hands or knife against knife? Uh, well, I mean, obviously it would depend on, um, you know, your, your environment, right? 
and, uh, and, and your culture and background and everything. So if you are carrying a blade, then obviously you'll have more of an interest in being able to train how to quickly access your blade and then probably working in a knife-to-knife -knife situation. Uh, in Western Europe, uh, the laws are such that most people don't carry the blade. Mm -hmm. So there tends to be more interest in the empty hand versus the knife. Um, so we teach both areas, but usually in, uh, in Europe, most people want to learn how to deal with a knife with empty hands. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you have to have both. It's, it's very important that you don't only focus on one area. You know, train knife to knife and uh, empty hand versus knife. Um, you know, from there. A lot of the knife to knife techniques we teach, um, we adapt to uh, things that people carry on them. So it can be a small torch, it can be a you know, a metal pen and so on, so they can still use similar techniques but using uh, legal tools. Okay. Um, could you do a little demonstration? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It's holstered underneath the clothing, uh, or it hooks the knife, is this. Well, I pin this to here. And then I want to free this hand up so I can just move this. Here, when you attach. That's here. Not like this. Here. And then there. So I can bend this elbow in order to. Two, six, and back. If I can't, and he comes here. If he doesn't counter here, I can. Salute, saluting motion to defend this attack here. Pull in, hit with this part of the hand, the edge of the hammer fist. Here. It's one, two, you pull, you try to hit him with the knife, you strike. Is this? And pin this to here. And then I want to free this hand up so I can just move this. Come in to here.